Okay, so we're going to conclude the three night test session of this astrograph, the Omegon Astrograph F 2.8. Yeah, so uh, and tonight we're gonna segue into that because the three last objects that I did in that amazing three night session uh, was uh, the heart and the soul nebula. Yeah, but since I uh, just uh, tested the telescope out. Uh, I didn't really mind the framing. If I would have, maybe I could have gotten both the heart and the soul in like a two panel mosaic. But now I'm gonna have to get a third uh, panel to stitch them together. So we'll see if I can do that tonight. Uh, there's clouds and stuff uh, coming and going, but it's like the first opportunity in a month. So anyway, I'll try it. So um, yeah, I'm just gonna wait for darkness now and do my polar alignment uh, and uh, yeah, what I did now, basically, from before, it was like I, I've turned this telescope around, so I have the camera here, in this end, almost obscuring the um, the uh, Polar camera, but I think, or Polar Master, but I think it's going to be okay. Uh, it feels better to have it sticking out this end. Yeah, but, yeah so that's it. Uh, today, we are going to uh, try to stitch the heart and the soul nebula together that we uh, shot during the trial period here of the Omegon Astrograph F 2.8 yeah, the hypergraph. So here's the uh, um, the uh, heart nebula. Here's the soul nebula. A bit noisy both of them, but still. And here is the stitching frame that I did. Yeah. <clears throat> so we can see that. Half of the heart nebula, we saw, see a piece of the soul nebula here, and we're going to use the uh, mosaic functions in PixInsight to combine these into one image. Yeah, so uh, what we're going to do then is that we're going to go to uh, the script menu, uh, image analysis, and image solver. And this is that we want to have a registration frame uh, with all the uh, um, uh, the uh, co the coordinates for each of these image yeah so <clears throat> here we have all the frames I want to use and I found that sometimes it's um, yeah this is like the coordinates for um, like one of the frames you can go in here and search for say the um, heart nebula for instance, and here comes the heart nebula. Yep. And you can get that, or you can find, you can't find the soul, but you can use the IC1848 for it. And then that comes up, and you can use that. And because, um, well, I've tried this before, the soul nebula doesn't really come in if you are using the coordinates for the heart, and vice versa. <clears throat> Maybe that is super obvious, but these two frames um, kind of work. So I'm using this first now. And I'm not changing anything else. Uh, maybe I should be, but I don't. And if you use the list of files, you get an output file to use uh, with this um, suffix. Uh, if you use active windows, not really sure if it adds it to the files itself. Well, I don't know, really. <clears throat> so I'm just going to do it this way. So now it will run the process of uh, just uh, plate solving <clears throat> to get the um, right ascension declination coordinates from these using the, um, the uh, 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 yeah, plate solving. So there one of them failed. <clears throat> don't know if that was the soul nebula. So the soul nebula could not be solved. Yeah. <clears throat> so what I do then is that you could do the same thing again. Image solver. <clears throat> yeah, remove. Uh, so, do, 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 do. there's the sun. Okay, okay, so remove and remove. And then I can go and do uh, I see 1848. Search for that. Do that. And then we'll just redo it. That works. Yes. <laughs> it 
So now it's written all the files. And so we now have basically the same file that is got a registration. Um, uh, we will use that to register everything. And for this, we will go into the mosaic function, mosaic by coordinates, and we will go into this. And here you can see we have our same file, but we have the uh, VCS uh, edition. So we'll just take these and then, and I'm not actually changing anything here. Uh, sometimes yeah, we can do fast here. <clears throat> uh, don't know anything of that, so. Uh, and I'll put, uh, we'll use the same folder and it will come with a register suffix. So let's go. Now this can take a while. <clears throat> See the percentage here of each frame. <clears throat> Picking in, not that bad. <clears throat> if you do a high quality, it's a lot slower. And what this will produce is uh, three registration images and each of them <clears throat> is uh, so you'll have like a canvas that will uh, fit all of them in their coordinates but each of the images is um, represented in each one of the uh, the canvas frames you, you'll see in a minute <clears throat> um, and basically then we can use that for the mosaic It will all make sense here in a bit. So there we go, done. <clears throat> there we are. Uh, so now let's look at the images. So here we have three registration frames. So we're just gonna take a look at them before we move on. Right. So here we are. Yeah. That's how it's going to be. So this is basically one canvas, <clears throat> um, identical canvas for each of them, but with their respective frame uh, in each of the images. Yeah. So what we're going to do now is that we're going to go to um, process image integration, gradient merge mosaic. Yes. So in this one, we're going to add our three registration files. Uh, not going to touch anything else. Uh, can we, let's generate a mask, should we? This is going to take some time. This takes about an hour. I think the mask generation takes quite a while, like 20 minutes or something. So let's skip that. It doesn't matter though, does it? Yeah, <clears throat> we'll just skip ahead in time like you used in movie magic, yeah. So, there we go. Boom, check a luck. So, uh, have a brew, coffee, whatever you want. See you in a bit. Yeah. So, here we go. Back in business. Uh, mosaics finished. That took us about an hour 15, something, 20. Uh, something like that. This is the, the mask. Don't know really what it, the, the shades of grey here tells us, really. But this is the image, and just in you looking at it on a, a slight distance like this, uh, it looks really nice. Yeah, uh, we can see the uh, we should have them merge between these two frames here somewhere. Um, I don't know. Very nice, very nice merge, I would say. Yeah. Uh, the merge with the uh, between the heart and the stitching frame, however, is not as nice. <coughs> yeah, it's uh, yeah the gradient in the background here is not not as nice. So uh, we and if we compare now this. And then this. I just get the feeling that this is a lot more like um, bleak. It's, uh, yeah, the background is a lot more 
has got a lot more um, gradients to it. I don't know. It just looks like it. It looks like there's a a layer on top of it or <clears throat> something. So I think we'll need to maybe do another stretch of this to get rid of something to maybe just enhance the colors a little bit again. Yeah. Yeah. Of course we have to uh, crop it as well. Yeah. Uh, since we don't want to. We don't want to have an image with all these <clears throat> black parts in it. Something like that, maybe? Still get all of the heart part here. At least everything that we want or need. We get pretty much everything from the soul nebula. Yeah. See what that looks like. Let's flip it around. yeah that's nice that's really nice yeah i can hardly just looking at it here i can can't really tell where exactly the stitching part is here in the heart that was uh maybe here somewhere yeah it was about there somewhere but just at the uh uh, uh, uh you know viewing distance you can't really see it and if we stretch this a little bit more Get rid of some of the gradients and has to color it a little bit then then i think that's gonna i think that's gonna go away so yeah we're gonna do that and then we'll we'll take a look at the end result Let me be the shadow.